nestled in a secluded mountain valley, you'll discover spectacular foliage, rustic countryside, and a place Charles Corralt calls a destination. That place is the Mass General Store in the rural historic district of Valley Crucis. Since 1883, the Mass General Store has been outfitting the Appalachians with traditional mercantile goods, comfortable clothing, rugged footwear, and quality outdoor gear for all mountain seasons. Stop by the Mass General Store when you're visiting the North Carolina high country and warm up by the pot-bellied stove, mail a letter at the corner post office, and discover for yourself why sometimes are just too good to leave behind. The Mass Store has been around since 1883 when the original building was built. Um, it wasn't called Mass at that point in time, it was a tailor store and became Taylor and Mast in 1897 and in the Mass Store in 1913. Alan Mast is one of the great grandchildren of W.W. Mast and is one of the managers at the original store his grandfather started. He, uh, he moved here, I believe, from Asheville and uh, began working with Henry Taylor and enjoyed what he did and decided he wanted to play a bigger part and bought the store. After W.W. Mast purchased the remaining half of the enterprise, the store was owned and managed by the Mass family over the next 60 years. During that time, W.W. and his family tried to carry all of the items their neighbors might need, from plows and cloth and cradles to caskets, which led to the popular saying, if you can't buy it here, you don't need it. The Mass store has been known for how it has always provided for the community. They provided locals with supplies for everyone, no matter what their needs or situations were. We bought a lot of the local items. We bought quilts. We bought uh, wooden items, folk toys. We, we bought people's herbs. Uh, still, we bought ginseng. We have a display up in the top of the store of some of the uh, herbs we used to buy. The Mass General store provided supplies to locals, but that's not all they were limited to. It also was a doctor's office at one point, you know, kind of a one-stop thing for the Valley. It provided a lot of different services for Valley Cruises. Most of the time it has been the mercantile. That is the main um, objective for it, and we continue that now. The flood of 1940 devastated the Valley Crucis area. The Mass General Store was there for the community to help out in a time of need. I know as far as the outlay of the community, I mean, it devastated a lot of the land. We, we tell the story of how the valley got its name, the Valley of the Cross, when the monk came years ago and looked down and saw the three rivers that came together to form a St. Andrew's Cross. The flood changed that, changed the riverbed, so you cannot do that anymore. We said it looked like the, the hills were alive because the, the dirt would absorb so much water and just run off. The whole thing would just fall off the side of the mountain. So uh, there were a couple of people who lived on Pigeon Roost Creek, which is the next holler over, basically, who were trying to escape the flood. And their bodies were washed over the creek. But when some of the bodies that were re recovered after the flood were stored here in the store, so it's kind of a makeshift ward. The Mass General Store provided a site for mourners to gather to honor the memory of their lost loved ones in the aftermath of the flood of 1940. In the early 1900s, general stores were usually placed around 10 miles apart. Valley Crucis is unique in the fact that there were two general stores which were less than a half a mile apart from each other, the Farthing and the Mass Stores. The relationship between the Mass and the Farthings, I would, I would call it friendly competition. Uh, I don't think it was cutthroat in any way. I mean, you look at the community and my, my first question would be, how could such a small rural community support two general stores? Uh, particularly of the size that they were. I mean, typically a general store might be just a, small, a smaller store that would try to carry a lot of things. And these were fairly sizable stores. My granddad father and granddad Mast didn't try to compete. They tried to go hand in hand. Granddad Mast had more food and uh, I guess, not high-end high items, and my granddad Farthing had suits, higher priced clothes, and higher food, so tried to work hand in hand. Locals were forced to keep up with politics because it affected where they picked up and dropped off their mail. The post office went back and forth between the Farthing store and the Mass store, depending upon who was in political power. So if the Re Republicans were in power, it would be at the Farthing store, and if the Democrats were in power, it would be here at the Mass store. I know my father was involved with one of the last moves. I guess when they brought it back down here, they loaded it up on a pickup truck, but the mail was still in the boxes. So all the guys were kind of spread out in the back to keep the mail from blowing out. I think it originally, or officially, found a home here permanently in 1970. Um, 
Auburn Farthing, who was the postmaster, when they, you reached, I believe the, the government stated uh, 70 years of age, you couldn't work anymore, and he was the postmaster. So on his 70th birthday, they had to close the post office or move it somewhere else because he couldn't be the postmaster any longer. Despite having two closed stores with one post office going back and forth between the two of them, the Farthings and the Masts officially worked hand in hand after Alan and Jeannie's parents married. My father and mother met in the second grade and she said she was going to marry that boy and she did from the second grade. She had it in her mind and they got married and been married, I believe, 55 years now. Around 1973, the Mass General Store was named to the National Register of Historic Places. In November of 1977, the doors were closed presumably just for the winter season with hopes of reopening in April of 1978. However, plans did not pan out. Many residents of Valley Cruces band together in an effort to save the old store and give the valley back its identity. John and Faye Cooper purchased the mass store and reopened it in June of 1980. They have managed to preserve the traditions of the past. We, we were great to the local economy and hope we still are. <laughs>